Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is so great to see you here. Today we are going to create a super scalable saving system that can save anything you want in the game without having to rewrite a bunch of scripts each time. Let's get right into it. First, go ahead and create a new Unity project or use one that you already have. This system will work either way. And once you've created that, first go ahead and create a new class. This is going to be called the state class. This is your base saving class. All of the states that you're going to track throughout your game are going to be extended from this class. So we're going to fill it up with a few example functions that we're going to override in the child classes. Some of these functions include a saving function. The saving function takes in the state and it returns a JSON object, which is basically a string of properties. Then you have the loading function. The loading function takes back in that string value and it converts it back into the state. Then we also have a function that returns the unique ID of the state. This is important because we need to bring back in the information that we've saved back into the correct state. So once you've saved that, go back into Unity and let's create a little test scene. Go ahead and create a cube. And once you've done that, create a new script called the transform state. This is going to track the transform values of that cube. To do this, first attach that transform state script onto the cube. Now guys, go ahead and open up the transform state. First thing you want to do is make it extend from the state class by replacing the mono behavior to the state. Once you've done that, you need to create a struct to track the different elements of the transform. The main things we want to track are the position, rotation, and scale. And make sure that this struct is serializable by adding this tag above it. Once you've done that, create a variable out of that struct so that we can track it inside the script. Now it's just as simple as overriding the save state and load state functions. In save state, we're going to take the current transform properties, put it into the struct and convert it to a JSON format using Unity's JSON utility. And inversely, in the load state function, we're going to take back that JSON and convert it back into the state and load those values into our transform. So we're setting the position in load state and in save state, we're getting the position and setting it to JSON. And the last function, guys, is the should save function. This will return back to our saving manager whether or not we should save this state. We shouldn't save, for example, if the position, rotation, and scale are the exact same as when we last saved it. This is useful because we can save storage space and performance. Now that you have the states, all you need now is a saving manager to load and save all of those states. Create that script and open it up. Once you've opened it up, create an update function. And in this update function, create two key binds. When you press space, we want to save all the states. When we press L, we want to load all the states. Now let's create the save function. It's going to be a coroutine to make sure we can save the game across multiple frames. This is important because we want to make sure that the game doesn't stutter when you try to save. Also make sure to start the coroutine in the update function. Now all we have to do in the coroutine is loop through every state in that scene. Now note that you don't have to worry about what type of state it is due to inheritance. For each state, make sure that the state wants to be saved. And if it does, we're going to wait one frame. And after that frame is passed, we're going to get the JSON from that state and we're going to save it to a file. Now to save it to a file, you're going to need the following imports at the top of the file. You're going to need system.io and system.threading.tasks. Now to save, all we need is the path and the JSON text, and then it's going to use the stream writer found in system.io to push that text to the disk at a given position with the given name. Once you've done that, head over back to the coroutine and use this function to save the JSON. For the path variable, use the application.persistentDataPath. For Windows, this is AppData, and for Mac, this is something similar. For the actual name of the file, we're using the getUID function from the state. This will make sure that we always know where the associated save file is for a given state. 
Now we're going to do something very similar for load. Loop through all the states in the game. If each state wants to be loaded in, then we're going to just find the expected file location using the unique identifier. If that file exists, then we're going to load in the JSON and pass it into the load state. And that's pretty much it. Now every state can be saved and loaded back into the game. Also, don't forget to call load in the update function when you press the letter L. Now to test out the game, all you have to do is create an empty game object in the scene, attach the save manager and press play. What you can do now is you can move around the cube, scale it rotated, press space, exit the game, come back in, press L and the cube should be exactly how you left it. This is just a small fraction of what you can do with this system. Now that the base is done, let's go ahead and have a bit of fun with it. Go ahead and duplicate that cube a couple times and add a rigid body to each one. Now if you do the same behavior as before pressing space and pressing L to load, you can see that even once you've changed the object and even if you have multiple, the system still works perfectly fine. Now the cool thing about the system is you can stack different states on top of each other. Now let's say we want to add a functionality where we're able to click on any cube and stop it dead in its tracks. Then when we save we want it to load it in the same position but also make sure that the rigid body is disabled. We can do that. Now we're going to do pretty much the same thing as before. Create a script called rigid body active state and then attach that to all of the cubes. Now go ahead and open that script, make sure it extends from state, and create a rigid body active value struct. And inside that, add a boolean that describes whether or not the rigid body is enabled. Make sure to create a variable out of that struct. Also create an awake method, and in the awake method, make sure that the variable is set to true originally. Now we're going to implement the on mouse down function. In this function, all you're going to do is set the rigid body to kinematic and we're going to update the state to tell it that active is now false. Now we're just going to override the save state function. Since all of the logic is already done, you just have to convert the state to JSON. Also, don't forget to mark the struct as serializable. Now in the load state, all you're going to do is load the struct from the JSON using JSON utility. But there's one catch. If the value is false once we load it, we're just going to set the rigid body to kinematic instantly. And just like that, now we have the ability to detect which rigid bodies have been stopped by the user and at what position they were stopped. And notice how they were stacking on top of each other. This means that they're decoupled and you can load in whichever states you want to track. This is pretty much the exact saving system that I'm using in Thomas Brush's new game, Father. It's a super simple system, yet highly effective. There's a lot more optimizations you can do on this. For example, saving into one file instead of many, or saving as a binary file instead of a JSON file. But I'll leave that as a challenge for you guys. I'd love to see what you come up with. Overall guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like down below. This is a new editing style, so also tell me what you think about that in the comments. As some of you know, me and Thomas are going to release a classic FPS shooter asset pack by the end of the year. And all of the systems that are going to be in that asset pack, I'm going to cover on this channel in a simpler form so that you guys can learn how I managed to implement them. Also, I'm super excited for a Udemy course that I'm currently building that is going to teach you how to make a highly customized player controller. So make sure you keep your eye out for that. Thanks for sticking around guys. It's been really fun making this video. I'll see you next time.